we have a couple different uh, tools to use to get your data into a format when we can, where we can easily use it. Now, the format might seem a little strange, but ultimately it's to make it easier for you on the analysis end uh, when we're done in, in several weeks with all this stuff for you to, to do some stuff. So, so that's the first thing. Second thing, um, what happens whenever we have a due date, like, so this stuff's supposed to be done before, right? We need, you guys need to finish this up this week. Um, when we have these, these, these hard deadlines, what happens is, uh, for, for whatever reason, I have no idea why, if it's due at 11.59 p.m., everybody will log on at 11.50 p.m. And, and try to do it, right? And so we've tried different things over the years. Um, uh, Google Sheets is a natural thing that should work. The issue is when everybody logs on simultaneously to the Google Sheets, it, it, it dies and it doesn't, and people accidentally write over other people's data and it causes issues. So um, what, we, what we have is we have a, an Excel file that's a mirror, that's the same thing as the Google Sheet. And this is what I like, to, this is my suggested workflow. You guys will go, if you haven't downloaded it, you can download the Excel file uh, to your local computer, to your local drive or whatever it is. Enter your surveys into that sheet, and I'll explain that in a second. You'll enter, enter that, and then once you get them entered, or, or the grip of them entered for the day, or the week, or the whatever it is, save your file, then you can copy those cells and go over to the Google shared file, the Google sheet, and paste it in, and done. That seems to work fairly well. So you're on the sheet, and there might be many people logged on, but it's a single thing, paste, and I'm done. What seems to cause the Google Sheets problem is when there's 20 of you guys logged on, and you're each kind of typing in different cells, and, it's, and, and then it lags, and then you think something's wrong, and you hit delete, and then, you, and then it all of a sudden deletes that. So that's, that's where we get the problem. So you guys will have your own local version of your data, and you'll save that, and you'll keep using that, and then if somebody accidentally overwrites the, the group, the, the shared merge data, you still have your backup thing. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're gonna go through right now how to enter data into your Excel file data sheet template, okay? So here we are, we're looking up here. Uh, this data is, so we have the, the, depends on what version of Excel you have, et cetera, so you'll probably see yours, um, it'll open like this where we have this um, split window. All that is, is it, it, the data is all there, it's just, it just uh, makes it a different way to be viewed. You can turn that on or turn that off if you, if you like it or don't like it. But right, let's just have an orientation here. So we have stuff going across the top, go, go, going across these rows here in these different columns. And then the first several cells, I have some example data pasted in so you can get, you can see, um, you know, if you're confused or you're starting off, how do I enter it? You can see some examples of how to enter it. Down below here, I have everybody's name, and, and there's a block for Zach, and then there's a block for Josh, and et cetera, right? And so you, everybody's names are in there. So you don't need to insert any rows or anything. It's all there. You just need to paste into the spaces so you don't have to overwrite on somebody else's territory or anything like that, okay? So let's take a look. First thing is uh, uh, your name is going to be here. And you're gonna say what version of the poll you're using. So that is, if you look on the upper left-hand corner of your poll, it's gonna say what it is. So the one I believe you guys have is 12.3, is that right? Right, 12.3. So let, let's just say something happens. Let's say all of a sudden we discover there's a, there's a spelling error or, or we totally messed up one of the options somehow. And, I, and I, you guys tell me today, I'm like, oh my gosh, let me fix that, so I'll fix it give you a revised version, that would be survey 12.4, right? So this is just our way of, of tracking to make sure what, was, uh, what, what data collection instrument was being used. So for most of you, it's gonna be the same number throughout. Name, uh, the name is here. Remember, once you've collected that survey from the person that's doing the survey, we don't want them, we're not spying on them, right? We don't wanna, we don't wanna imply that we're spying, but once they've gone away, you want to make sure to go back to that survey, jot down the date, the time, and the location, right? So that's not, that's not identifying information, that's just for our organizational purposes. And so in that case, I would put my, uh, the actual date in here, and then the year, this is just helpful in the, in the larger database to, to have this stuff all binned together. 
And then the time, again, time is approximate. You don't have to get to the exact second, but it's just you know, 9.15, 9.30, something like that. And then where is it? Okay, So uh, you're welcome to put an address in there if you want, but you don't need to. But it does need to be distinguishable. So you wouldn't just put Starbucks, right? You'd want to put a Starbucks, a Camarillo Starbucks on Arneal or something, right? So that we can know, oh, are, are the, were these done at the same place or a different place? This next column over here is the county, right? So our primary focus area for this, Santa Barbara, Ventura, Los Angeles counties. That's our target zone. Um, we occasionally do a survey outside, but that, that's, our, that's where we're um, gonna be focused. Okay, so that's all the setup. I also suggest, which you guys do just to make it make more sense to you and be logistically easier, when you start getting these surveys right now, I would go in, so right now, um, uh, uh, here's Zach, here's his first survey, right? On that survey that's number one, I would write on the upper right hand corner of my paper survey, number one. The next one, number two, number three, et cetera. Because if we do have a problem as we go through and are doing the quality assurance, quality control stuff, as we're looking through, making sure everything's good, what stuff wasn't accidentally put in the wrong column or something. And if we find an error, sometimes it's, it's pretty obvious what it is. Maybe things might be all shifted over one cell or something. In other cases, it's not too obvious. So I'll say, hey, whoever, Josh or whoever, hey, can you go in and can you fix that? And if you have a big stack and you're saying, look at this, going, oh, shoot, which one? It's going to take a long time to figure out which one that is. Whereas if you have them numbered, super easy to go back and just pull out number seven and go and go do it, right? Uh, and that also brings up the other uh, comment, which I don't remember if I've, I've made before, but do recall at the end of this, at the end of, in, in several weeks when we're done with this, you guys need to turn in your physical copies of the surveys. And so just part of our IRB protocol is we have to archive those for uh, at least one year um, for reasons that don't make any sense, like, what does it matter? But you know, it's, it's based off of stuff with medical records and stuff and well maybe there's something sensitive we want to go back and check. So we got to keep it for a year and then we shred it. We shred them all. Um, but, but you do need to submit those. And so again, having them numbered, if we do find a problem, if somehow we're looking at this you know, some point in the future, you know, two months from now or something, we can go back and look. And so you guys can just submit those to me with a rubber band, one stack, that's it. And that, that's when we're completely done with this stuff. All right, let's get on to the data entry part. So let's have a look. So every single one of our questions has, uh, so here's, for example, question one. When you hear about California, uh, or, you know, what do you think of, or I forget what he says, you know, give us a word, whatever we say. Um, this, is, this, is, this column here is what they said, or what they filled in, right? The column to the left, or the first column in each of the questions says answered. That just means, did someone answer this or not? Anytime someone answered it, or anytime someone selected one of the, one of the you know, fill in the blank options for the survey, they put a check mark in, they put an X mark in, we code that as number one. If, and, so, and so this says, just to be clear, this survey right here, uh, they said, what do you, when you hear of California, what do you think? And this person wrote in Golden State. So I'd put a one here in this cell because they did give us an answer, and I'd type that answer in. Uh, and to be clear, each of these rows is one full survey. So we're going to start on the left and enter stuff as we, as we spread to the right, and then, we'll, then uh, the very last question will be the farthest right part on this sheet. Cool? Okay, so this one we're just going to type in whatever they say. Um, notice right here it was blank. Okay, so we put in a zero because it was not selected, and then we left this cell uh, blank. Next question, same thing. Did they answer it or not? What they say, etc. Now, if they if they went if they put if they wrote in the blank, I don't know. I would put in a number one and write in I don't know, right? So, so that someone saying, I don't know, is different than this. So I don't know, they actually responded, yeah? This zero, we don't know, 
Did they mean by that zero they don't know? Or did they just skip it? Or are they confused by the question? Or, or were they going to go back to it and then somebody, their cell phone rang and they forgot to go back, right? So a blank is not the same as an I don't know. Okay, and then we keep going over here, go over here, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, now we get to um, the first question that has, you know, uh, here's a question, and then is it yes, no, or I don't know? So again, just like before, if they answered it, it gets a, it gets a tick. It says, yes, they answered. And then um, they, in this case, in this case, they selected that uh, they did not know of a wetland within 50 miles of their home. So put a one there. The other set, uh, options that were not selected get a zero. Um, and, uh, and, and so forth, right? So there we go, it's all going on. Now, once you guys start submitting this and we start pulling our data and, and checking it, every once in a while we might discover an error. So let's check out this. In this question here, in, que in this particular answer, um, this person said, hey, do you know of a wetland within 50 miles of your house? And they said that they didn't know or they, or, or they were unsure. So that's how this was entered. But then this next one, we said, hey, how much did it change? And they ticked every single one of the options, right? So they're only supposed to pick one option. Oh, they could also skip it if they, if they, you know, if they really said they didn't know or no, this should probably have been left blank, but whatever. So they did that. So go ahead and enter this first, this first pass, enter what, however they entered the data into your, into your physical form. But then clearly this isn't right, right? There's, there's been some error here, whether they, they misunderstood our instruction or whether they're trying to actively screw with us. It doesn't matter at this point. Just put it in and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to highlight those cells, all the cells of that question yellow so that when we, when we start merging it, we can go, ah, okay, there's a problem with this. We need to stare at that and have a conversation, either fix it if, if it's obvious how to fix it or we might just have to leave that blank in the final version, but, but we'll flag it at first. Cool? Yeah? All right. And then we're going to keep going that way. That pattern continues. That pattern continues. Bloom, 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 bloom. Pattern continues, pattern continues. And then here's the next one that'll cause you some consternation. So the ranking one. So this is the one, recall, where they have to put number one, two, three, and four by each of these various potential threats. So again, here we selected that yes, they answered that question. This person said that pollution is the number one threat, habitat destruction is the number two threat, excessive harvesting is the number three threat, and, and invasive species, exotic species, is the number four threat. This is the one that is most likely to be flubbed. So this is a great example of were we to be doing this in an online, and, and you know, a, a iPhone-based or a tablet-based or, an, or, an, or a, a hyperlink or something like that where they fill it out, really easy because we can force, right, we can, we can not let them advance if they, if they try to give a weird answer. Um, but in the physical form, they could do anything. So they might put number one by one of the things and then, and then leave the rest blank. They might say, they're all horrible, right? Like this person here said, they're all horrible. This is, a, pollution is number one and exotic, right? And so that doesn't help us in terms of our ranking. Or they might do something like this, which is, uh, yeah, these two things are really, really bad. And this thing is, these two things are low priority, right? So. Anything that's not a one and a two and a three and a four, we need to look. Now, some, in some cases, we can, we can fix it. So in some cases, they maybe said, this is number one, and this is three and four, and this one might be blank. It's, you know, we can figure out that that's a, that's a two. It's, it's, it's pretty clear that's what that was, or, or we can interpret that as a two. Um, anyway, just enter what they have for right now and flag it yellow if it's obviously some, some weirdness. Okay, number next. This one, okay, let's do this one. Let's do age, Gesundheit. So again, what was the first, what was your first, uh, how old are you when you first went to the beach? And so most people will say a number, which is what we want in years, but a, 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 a surprisingly large number of people will say when I was a baby, when I was a toddler, you know, when I was a couple months old, you know, something like that. And so for this first part, you guys are just gonna type in 
uh, whatever they say in this thing right here. And you can leave for right now, you can leave this column blank, this age one, we'll, we'll fix that. So in most cases, we'll just copy that column on the left, paste it into the right, but we have a couple um, things. So when they say a uh, uh, newborn baby or something, we enter that as uh, two months, you know, we enter as a fraction of a year, that kind of thing. So we have some assumptions when they say certain, certain phrasing, so we can bin it. But for now, just go ahead and put whatever the response is, even if it's not a numerical answer. The response is what you guys should fill in. Uh, you can just leave that blank, yeah. So we'll go through and we'll do it all at once at the, towards the end, or when we do a, a mid-track mid assessment. Okay, the next one is the source of news. This is the first one, I believe, where they could pick multiple things. So in this case, this person said they got their news both from internet news sites and from social media. So, so that, that wouldn't be flagged yellow because they could, in theory, tick all of them, right? Also, note that this is one of the first ones where there's an other fill in the blank option. So if they wrote anything in the other part of the, sur in that, that option in the survey, I would enter it as a one because they picked other, right? And then off to the right, I'd put in whatever they wrote in, in the fill in the blank. Cool? And then more stuff we've seen, more stuff we've seen, more stuff, okay. Uh, one, one quick uh, comment here is these things that are, there's a few things just for me to remember, the, 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 this is slightly different from the master data list when I, when I paste it in just so I keep track. But, these op, but then you'll see occasionally some of these options right here where the, the option they can pick is, is in red. That indicates that this is, this is a not real option. So we have a few question options here that um, are built in for us to evaluate the accuracy of our instrument, right? So whenever we look at a poll, blah, blah, blah is winning the presidential election, blah, blah, blah thinks we should vote for this or this many people support X, right? You need to look at the, the error rate of that poll. And so uh, if it's in a news story, they might not say it. But if you get to the original source of the, of the survey, it'll say something like, um, 51% plus or minus 3% or 4% or, or some amount of error, right? And what that, what that means is we can't distinguish stuff that's, that's within whatever that, that percentage is of the, of the reported percentage, right? So remember I showed that, I showed you guys, right, the NFL statistics thing? Did I show you guys that? Yeah. And so um, I'll put it up after this. I'll, I'll put it up against like 30 seconds. But it's like you guys saying, this is 56%, whereas this at 58%. And as if like, duh, right? And you're like, what a second, is that really different or not? So um, turns out what most polling in, uh, institutions do is they do, a little, they do a little test of their error. And they say, oh, our error is 3%. And we're gonna keep doing the same thing from here on out. And so every, every survey, they claim that their error rate is 3%. They are not they're not directly measuring their error every survey. We do, right, we do. And so one of the ways we do that is right here. So we have, in this particular question, this is have you heard of these institutions? Uh, this, I forget what the full thing is, it says on your sheet, but the something something rotation commission and the blah 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 restitution and W-O-O-A, those are not real things, those don't exist. So if anybody ticks that option, that's, an, that's error. Now. Uh, that could come from people just saying like, screw the survey's too long, I want to finish this, and they're just randomly checking stuff. Or they could honestly think that they have heard of that because it maybe sounds similar to something else. Uh, so we can't distinguish between those things, but it doesn't really matter, right? It's just telling us that whether people are intentionally screwing with us or because they're tired or they're confused with the reality, whatever the situation is, it doesn't matter, it still means that that is not accurate. And so we use these false responses as a, as a measure of error for us. Cool? So you don't need to pay attention too much to that. Not now, we'll get that later. But, um, but I, just, I just tell you that so that if you are, if you do get one of those older folks that is really, really conscientious and they really feel stupid for not you know, knowing all the answers, they might ask you afterwards some questions. You can answer anybody's questions about anything after the survey. I mean, well, well, 
logistically stuff, you can obviously answer their questions to start with. But if they ask some specific question about an oil spill, about a, about whatever gas tax, whatever it is, what you can say is, um, actually, I'd love to talk to you about that, but but after the survey. So our protocol says that I, I shouldn't give you any additional information. Don't worry about it. Answer it to the best of your ability. There's no wrong answer, but go ahead and do that. So a few people might, okay, so we did that. You said that. Then at the end, okay, now I want to talk about oil spills. So tell me about the blah, 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 right? So you might, in theory, get someone going, oh, this W-O-O-A, ah, what, I, what is that? I, I, you know, I, I just I couldn't think of what that was. And you can say, actually, that's not a real thing. That's one of our, um, our, one of our tools to, to measure um, if people are, are um, uh, how accurate people's responses are. So, yeah, that's what that is. Okay, all right, uh, more of the same stuff answered and then, and then all the different options, et cetera. Okay, so here's a great example uh, of the importance of the uh, proper coding of the data. So here, so remember in this question it says, hey, how, how much seafood have you eaten in the last week? And it says, you know, a, a, a deck of cards is about, whatever we say, like three ounces or something, right? So we give them a guidance. We're, I'm expecting them to write the answer in ounces. Every once in a while, we'll get some crazy European tourist or somebody or whoever, like, ah, yeah, yeah, I ate five kilos, right? And they'll write five, you know, K-I-L-O-S or something, right? Uh, so what you need to do when, you, when that happens, all right, uh, so the classic examples during the, um, that I always think of is during the uh, refugio oil spill, we we're doing surveys and one of the guys we bumped into, uh, actually not at the beach, we were not at the beach, we were at In-N-Out getting lunch as you want to do. And so uh, I said, hey, this guy, hey, would you mind doing a survey? I said, sure. Turns out he was one of the responders that was brought in from Louisiana. So he's filling in and he wrote in 30 pounds. And I was, I was like, thanks a lot. And, then, and the, those beach surveys were, were just a front and back. They're a much shorter survey. And so I looked down, I saw oh, there's some writing. I'm like, oh, I said, oh, sir, uh, the seafood? You said 30 pounds. And he went, yeah, that's right. I said, 30, 30 pounds in a week. The, the you ate in a week. Like, you, mean like, you just have like a family barbecue? Like, no, no, no. So that guy was like, you know, he's like, I ate 30 pounds of seafood, right? He was a large individual. Um, but still, uh, uh, he had several double doubles. But um, so uh, if, if it's something like that, convert that to ounces, right? So on the, on the occasional time you might get something that's not ounces, go ahead and convert it to ounces and, and enter that uh, converted number. Um, okay, but here's why it matters. So these guys, this person right here didn't eat any seafood. So they wrote in none or zero with, you know, th that kind of thing, right? So they positively answered, and the answer was that they consumed no seafood in the past seven days. Cool. That's that number. This person left it blank. Again, maybe that person didn't eat any seafood, but we don't know. So calculating the average is, you know, if we, is the, the, the average amount of seafood eaten by these people in this, from this site or at this age or however we're bidding it is going to differ based on if we have another zero or it's a blank, right? So that's why it really, we really have to code it properly and it does, it matters. We got to really pay attention. Um, it's most obvious in these numerical responses, but it, it matters for all of our responses. Cool? All right. Uh, one more uh, one and then I'll let you guys start to play around and enter it on your own. Um, um, yeah, where is it? Okay, here we go. So our, 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 our list of these management efforts. So this one, we, we it's, it's more useful for these questions to be entered in a different format. And so this will be confusing, so I wanna, want you guys to, to stare up at this for a second. Okay, the first one is, hey, what do you think about the cap and trade? Next one is, you know, what do you think about our beach nourishment efforts? 
uh, efforts to keep homelessness, uh, ho homeless folks out of these areas, etc. <clears throat> so the first, first column, as before, is did they answer this? Did they give us any answer at all? Again, the number one is that they gave us any kind of answer. Zero, they didn't. So if they didn't, if they didn't answer anything, these next two options are blank. If they answered and they said that they were unsure or I don't know, one of those options, I'm going to say yes, they answered and put a one in the unsure bin. This next column, we're, we're going to code it based on their response. And when we code data, there's no, there isn't necessarily any one particular correct way to code it, but the approach that we're going to do is recall, they can say that they feel very positive about that option, uh, or what do we say, is it supportive? I forget how we word it, is it supportive on that? Uh, positive, okay, positive. So, so positive, very, so very positive, positive, neutral, which is not unsure, it's they're neutral. They think some of it was good, some of it was bad, but in the, in the overall, it's not neither good nor bad. And then negative or very negative. So very positive is going to be coded as the number two. Positive coded as the number one. Neutral as a zero. Negative as a minus one. And very negative as a minus two. And so in this case, this person on this question, they answered it and they said they were very positive about the, the cap and trade uh, uh, policy stuff. Okay. So I'm going to enter this, that yes, they gave me an answer, give it a number two, and they didn't tick the unsure option. So this is going to allow us to calculate a numerical response for the score, and we can compare those different scores uh, uh, throughout. Uh, to the, we can compare cap and trade, the, the positivity associated with cap and trade to the positivity related to homelessness, to um, exiting the Paris Accord, et cetera. Okay? So that, that one is probably the most complex one. That's the one that's I have to maybe uh, double check a couple times. Cool. The very last, and everything else should be pretty obvious. It's all, and, and then again, this, this option, this, it says, uh, what do you think about the, I think it says the cholesterol Songa's bridge or something. There's no such bridge. So that's another example of a, of a response that uh, if, they, if they, so the only, the, pro, the only proper response to that is either being neutral or being unsure. If they said they're positive about it in any way, shape, or form, or negative in any way, shape, or form, that's, a, that's not possible because that doesn't exist, right? Okay, uh, and then the very last thing is just off to the far right, off to the far right, we have this comments section. So uh, anything that would be helpful to future students, uh, looking through this 10 years from now, looking through the data you've collected or to our public agencies who we share this data with or, or whoever, um, you, you're welcome to put that in. You do not have to enter anything necessarily for, for any, any particular survey. But if the guys seem like they were high, if they were, if they were totally drunk when you're doing this survey at institution, you might want to say the dude's a little loopy or something, right? Um, uh, anything that's going to help us interpret the results should we discover something unusual about those surveys, right? Maybe uh, this was a mom and she had 10 kids and the kids were screaming the whole time and she seemed kind of distracted, you know, something like that. Or they answered the first four pages and then their cell phone rang and they had to run off, right? So that's why there's no data for the last, the last you know, 10 questions or, or whatever it is. So don't feel like you have to include any information in the comments, but any information that would help us interpret it would be, would be welcome.